With UML, it's obvious that there are several different diagrams for different sorts of software projects which are meant to enable uh, the UML to be useful or being able to function in many types of software projects. Of course, this also means that the UML as a concept is really huge and application of UML in a software project can be problematic simply because there are so many little things to remember. So, on this final presentation on UML, I'm going to uh, talk about some of the diagrams which, based on my observations and knowledge on how software industry operates, seem to be more useful than others. These diagrams, as I have highlighted in this uh, picture, are class diagram, deployment diagram, state machine diagram, use case diagram, and sequence diagram. These are the sort of diagram types which are used in software industry to the degree that I have actually seen them in use on several places. These diagram types also come from all of the three main branches of diagrams. They include structure diagrams, behavior diagrams and interaction diagrams. This is obvious since in several projects we need to define what the structure of our system will be, how our system should behave and how our system should interact with other parts of software or other external systems. So uh, quickly going through the diagram types. The class diagram defines how the concepts of system are related. It's more or less useful for programmers to get the idea of what methods and what connections there are in the system and it give also gives some, some information on what sort of data we are handling and what sort of internal uh, components the system will have in the future. On the system that actually has been built and deployed, the deployment diagram, on the other hand, gives the idea on how the system behaves, what sort of things we need to acquire, and what sort of platforms we will be using when the system is fully functional. For example, in this example, we know that we are using web browser as our access point. We have to create a server for the web system itself and also for the database and in database we are going to need someone with MySQL uh, knowledge to create this system for us. So overall the deployment diagram tells us where we are going and class diagram says what is the system or how the system works we are building. The state machine diagram or state chart diagram as it was earlier known is more detailed state transition model. It's not that used in normal uh, software projects but in embedded projects this is something that's really useful since with embedded systems you really don't have access to a keyboard or mouse or sometimes even monitor or any sort of an access system besides couple of buttons so you really need to define how the system will behave on different situations and for that the state machine diagram is actually really useful. The use case diagram coupled with the use case definitions are one of the mainstays in many software projects. They are a way to collect the requirements into sort of uh, understandable and manageable features and if we are able to identify the features correctly we simply need to uh, implement the features in our software. It also gives some sort of an idea on how the system should behave or gives an idea if there's some immediate or obvious problem with the system behavior. For example, the user has to uh, input their PIN code means that we need to have a keyboard or if we are defining a system where the user has to input their card we also have to consider things like how the user will get the card or 
For example, we need to have a card reader module, and for the card reader module, we need to consider how much use that module is going to get. So, overall, the use case diagram and the use case definition are something that's used in uh, uh, systems to define the behavior and get the ideas or more concrete ideas on how the system works. On ac actually, uh, the sequence diagram is also added here, mostly because it's also the mainstay of defining client and server communications. Uh, it's important that software behaves ex as it's expected to do, especially when we are using some protocol, for example, uh, using instant messaging software or simply just using TCP IP protocol for getting information through network. So basically if we are defining a custom protocol or have message exchange which is really complex and complicated in some occasions, the sequence diagram actually is really nifty tool for defining how, what sort of messages the system should expect, what's the timing of these messages, and also uh, what order of activities will happen when two systems communicate with each other. It also gives the idea of timing in situations where that's needed. For example, if we want to create some sort of internal system which is reliant on timing of activities or the order of activities. This can also be illustrated with the sequence diagram. So the question is why I have been talking about UML and now I'm telling you that there's several parts in it which really aren't that useful. Don't get me wrong, they are useful. They have the ability to convey information, but the these five diagram types I just mentioned are more, or more generic or useful in more uh, occasions than the other ones. For example, since UML is not development language, I know that there's tools which can generate source code directly from UML. That's not really the main use of UML uh, design. It's The UML enables knowledge transfer from one person to another and it's also a visual presentation of ideas so that people can communicate with each other. For example, class diagrams or deployment diagrams are really, really difficult to explain without any visual aids, so that's where the diagrams come in and are really useful. So overall, here's a list of how I consider these, uh, so to say, more useful diagrams to function. The use cases define how the system should operate, while the class diagram defines how the internal parts should be defined. The deployment diagram defines the environment in which the system will operate and give an idea on what components we need to create. Additionally, if we are doing something which has client-server communication, we add sequence diagrams, or if we have something that requires rigid timing operations or rigid order of operations, then the sequence diagram is also useful. And if we are doing embedded system, we can use the state machines to define that behavior. So, uh, please keep in mind that I'm not saying that some parts of the UML are redundant or not useful. I'm saying that these diagrams are the minimal subset of things you really should learn and should understand from the UML, because these are the mainstay communication of ideas and enables knowledge transfer between different languages and different cultures and different workplaces. Because we use rather standard notation for defining how classes work, what classes look like, or in deployment diagram what component looks like, it also means that many people are able to understand your concept from the diagram much more efficiently than they would uh, if, they, if you were to uh, just explain what you want to do. Overall, keep in mind that UML, the development models, all the standards and all the other things are more or less enabling us to do this more easier. 
we have users and we have customers, we have ideas for software, we collect requirements, make requirements out of fe and features out of the things we consider that would be useful. Uh, based on that, we create the analytical architecture, UML designs, and BCE, and uh, for example, with BCE analysis, which we'll get back to later, so that we have an idea of what sort of system we are building. These analytical ideas, UML designs, are realized with actual architecture and components built on a platform that we will be using, and by creating our source code for our software, combining that with the platform, we will have deployable software. So, keep in mind, the UML is design tool. It's used mostly here, and the development languages, programming tasks, that sort of things, are done here, when we are actually creating source code with the actual architecture over some existing platform with the objective of creating deployable software which has the features, requirements and limitations we collected from the first part of the project. And that's it. That's software engineering.